Hi, I'm Brad Thor, New York Times best-selling author of the new thriller, Blacklist, and I'm here with my good pal. Armin Schultz, and I'm the narrator of the audiobook of the new Brad Thor thriller, Blacklist. Your other books, you've done a lot of research, I know, going overseas mm -hmm. and getting into various theaters of war, per se. I know in Full Black, you had to go do some stuff. We talked on the other interview we did about you going over and actually going in with... When I went to Afghanistan the, and with, everything, yeah. the teams. Yep. This one's interesting because, without spoiler alert, I won't say anything about the book, <laughs> um, because of what's going on in Washington and, and the, the stuff that has to do with, like you said before, governmental mm -hmm. eavesdropping and certain things like that. How did you get active in this book? Like, what did you do to research this? Did you go to D.C. or is this all from the yeah, fabulous no, no, no. mind of I, Brad I, Thor? D.C. and Texas, and a lot of it is, a lot of it is, uh, a writer is someone who's trained their mind to misbehave. It's another great Stephen King-ism. Um, but a lot of what I did in this book, because I, I was fascinated with this idea of every single one of us, you, me, the people who are listening and watching this, right. are under surveillance, whether we know it or not, 24 hours a day. Now, it might not be active surveillance, but every email is being recorded and stored, every text message, every cell phone call, um, every credit card transaction. It's going into all of these huge databases. One of the things I talk about in the book, one of the, the fun plot points, is the fact that uh, the NSA is outgrowing its facility at right. Fort Meade, Maryland. They've got so much data that's going in there. And so I'm doing this, and I was thinking, wow, this is, this is fascinating. If we're all under surveillance, what if that surveillance gets you? And it's, you know, ostensibly, it's to get bad guys, right. not to get good people. Right. But what if that system was ever turned against the good guys? What would that mean, and how would the good guys, like a Scott Harvath and the people he works with, how would they be able to beat the technology? Right. Well, I'm reminded that one of the reasons we've had a lot of the trouble we've had with Al-Qaeda is that the higher tech we get, the lower tech they go. Right. And I thought this would be fascinating to take guys who are current, very high-speed operatives who use the technology that I talk about in the book all the time. It gives them the edge in getting the bad guys, but right. what if you remove that? What if your operatives had to literally unplug and not touch anything electronic? Right. What would they do? And I thought, wouldn't this be fun to go back to kind of espionage 101, that's, back that's to the Cold War, brush bypasses and dead drops right. and all that kind of that's stuff. That's what's great about the book. So thank you. It, what the fun thing for me was is I got to ask current spies and counterterrorism guys, what would you do in this situation? But then I got to go back to a lot of the retired guys right. I know to say, how did you do it in your day? Yeah. And that was this kind of fun melding together uh, that was very rewarding in the writing of the book. Yeah, the two characters, um, Scott's bosses and... Here's one boss that goes to the real old time guy in, in the story. He goes to his mentor. Yeah, which is, yeah. and he's great because that character was a lot of fun to play just because he's the wise old guy who's like, well, let's do it all the old fashioned way.